Hello guys, Mukas here. Today I wanted to showcase some of the best under spots to deploy on indoor. So this is only when attacking. When defending, you can deploy right on the control point. This is usually the best spot, but not when attacking. Spawn points can make you lose or win a fight in plain side too, so I felt this could be very useful for any player. So I'm not gonna talk about the obvious spots that everybody knows. I'll only talk about the less obvious ones, the ones with the position advantage, like the high ground or the proximity to a control point. So let's start with the crown, because we're on indoor. So next to C point there is a very well known garage, but very few people know how to deploy right. You need to completely stick the sandy to the wall so it's harder to reach from above and nobody can hide in between the sandy and the wall. This will make it survive much longer. So to do this you just need to get in in reverse, like in real life. This will allow you to completely hug the wall, this will protect the sandy from C4 fairies, and the people spawning will be more safe. So the next interesting spot is on top of the island, east of A point. This is very hard to get there because you need to cross in front of the tower, but if you get there this will be a very nice spawn for your faction. You need to drive past these boxes and behind this building the sandy is completely covered from the tower. And you can defend it pretty easily with speedfire turrets and proximity mines. This is a very interesting spot if you already have B and C secured. This will allow your faction to push to A point and the tower much easier. So the next spot is on the other side of the tower, next to the L building. This is a very good spot to attack A point. But the sandy is very exposed to light assault dropping from the landing pads. They can jump from there and see for the sandy very easily. So you'll have to stick around to defend the sandy and repair. Or you'll have to be the stealthiest as possible. A cloak sandy will work great for this location. So that's it for the crown. We, we have so little percentage that we're not even seeing. No. Well, I will be at the <laughs> crown. I will be at the crown. I would just say take the whole platoon to the crown and farm the shit out of the crown. So the next base is Broken Arch Road. This is a highly contested base between Crossroads and Towerage. And usually people just deploy north or south of the base on the low ground. This is the only way to get to the control point anyway, but I found out that it's very useful to deploy on the high ground. On top of the canyons because this will give you total domination on the low ground. From there your faction can snipe anything below, vehicles or infantry. So to get there from Tarich you just need to take this entrance on the left side, pass through the canyons and after a very long and steep path, you'll get next to Xenotech Labs and from there you can get above Broken Arch Road. Any spot on the high ground can do the trick but I like to find a hole to be covered from vehicles because they can come very easily from crossroads so watch out for them. You can also use this path to attack Towerish Depot from the north. This way will completely bypass the gates. This spawn is much more effective than trying to take down the shields. Your faction can run straight to the control point without having to care about the generators. And the next base is... Holding Pass Checkpoint. This base is such a mess, there is almost no good deployment spot for Sanders. One that is not terrible is to deploy right next to C point on the high ground. So to do this you need to bypass the shield, I use the gate shield diffuser and then drive past B point and then I deploy behind C. It's a very interesting spot because it's very close to a control point and B point is not far but the drawback is that the sender is very exposed to defenders on the southeast tower. They can get there very fast with the jumpers on A point so make sure this tower is under your control. The sender is also very exposed to tanks and air from the north side so make sure you are ready for this. And if you can keep your sandy alive long enough, this can make a huge difference. This spot almost guarantees you to take C point. B point is not far, after that A point is another story. So another spot that is not bad if you want to be sneaky, or if you don't have get shield diffuser, is to come from the south. North of Crimson Bluff Tower there is a very narrow path. You need to drive very carefully on the higher carrions. until you get in this little spot. The sandy is very safe there but the control points are very far away. This spot is more interesting if you want to take down the shield generators. You need to sprint north and you are on it. And then you can try to hold the room that only have two doors, so it's possible with a small squad we already did many times. So the next bases are Black Shard Iridium Mine and the Stronghold. Again the usual spots are on the low ground, but it's also very important that you control the high ground. To get on the south canyons there is a safe path from Arroyo Station a narrow path that goes up, very steep at the beginning. 
but from there you'll be able to deploy anywhere above Black Shard and the Stronghold on the south side. These are very nice sniping spots and the vehicles under you are very exposed. You just need to watch out for air because you have zero cover against them. And for the north canyons you need to get there from the gravel pass road. There is a very steep path between Black Shard and gravel pass that can get you on top of the canyons. This location can be very useful to constantly suppress the enemies on the low ground. Of course you are going to be spotted by air very fast so make sure you are ready for this. A lock on or a walker on your Sunday or a burster max. So the next base is Havar Northgate Garrison. This base is very hard to attack from the north because there's only one road on the low ground and the entrance is guarded by a shield and towers. So the best way is either to use a gate shield diffuser or pull a Sandy from behind enemy lines. You'll have to hack a terminal like a Tapar Tech Plant or Sunstone Gulch. And from there you can sneak into Havar Northgate from the west. The best spot I found is to deploy on the last tower on the left side and this will give your faction an excellent spawn, close to the control point, covered from the air and vehicles, close to an infantry terminal that can be hacked. So from my experience, the best way to cap this base is to bring a sender from behind enemy lines. So the next base is Red Ridge Communications. <laughs> this base is also a mess, because it's like on an island. You can only get in from the south, and the spawn is right next to a point, and you are forced into a few buildings to advance. So the best on the spot I found is to drive on the right side of the base, and deploy right next to endpoint on the arms of the landing pad. This is a very risky spot because you are very close to the control point, close to the spawn, and exposed to air vehicles. But it's very interesting for refaction because you can literally spawn on a point. And if you hold your sandy long enough, this can give you the cap. So next we're going to talk about arm stations. There is two types of arm stations now, the new type and the old type. And for the new type, the most important spot for me is to deploy next to a point on the north side of the base. So you often need to use get shield diffuser to get there and this will allow you to spawn right next to control point and be totally covered from vehicles and air again. It ju it's just a little complicated to get there because of the obstacles but if you make it this helps a ton to capture this base. This spot also works for all damn stations but you are next to the spawn room so you constantly need to protect the sandy. So the most important in attacking amp station is to deploy inside of the walls not outside this is much more interesting for refaction because they can be useful right after the spawn. So this is for Indar, I'm sure I forgot many good spots but these are some of the most important. Deploying a sander is extremely useful for your team so you should always try to bring one, even if you only play infantry. And these spots can enable you to make a difference even solo and get a lot of thirds. So that's why I think it's very important to know for any planet man. So I hope you found this useful, if you have more sander deployment spots, please share them in the comments below, I would love to know them to be more effective on the battlefield. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a big ass thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe, it's free guys. Have a good day and I'll see you soon, bye bye.